Hey, welcome to the part one introduction to Magic Samplitude Music Studio 2014. Um, this is a DAW, a digital audio workstation. It uh, records MIDI and audio signals. It uh, allows you to edit those MIDI and audio signals. And it uh, um, does it in various ways. Uh, MIDI, uh, you can quantize, humanize, all that stuff. It works on a piano roll type editing. And uh, for the audio, you can do stuff like chop, move, crossfade takes. Um, each uh, take that you put on a track can have effects put on them or EQ'd individually. Um, there's also uh, pen and spline editing of those uh, signals, of those takes, uh, which uh, you can do various kinds of things like modifying the, uh, um, the volume or, um, you know, the panning and that sort of thing. Um, in this version, uh, there's also a, a more uh, simpler version called Studio 2. But in this version of Samplitude Music Studio 2014, there is auxiliary buses. So you can go ahead and channel um, the many tracks into one track and control them from that one uh, track, auxiliary track. Um, so for example, if you wanted to take a uh, drum kit with several tracks, you know, one on the bass drum, one on the tom, one on whatever. Uh, they can all be channeled through into an auxiliary track. So uh, it makes it a little easier for the mixing. So let's get into it here. <clears throat> uh, we'll start up Samplitude. Now this is just an introduction so that you can understand uh, the setup and such. Uh, a lot of uh, new users will open this up and go, oh, wow, wh where is everything? So, <clears throat> excuse me, let's, uh, let's get into this. Um, all right. Now, we are starting in easy mode here, so I'm just going to assign it to the next a new project here. But when you first start up, you will get a, uh, oh, I will press the Y button. Uh, button on my keyboard to bring up the what you will see is this when you first start it up is an easy setup interface um, if you're unfamiliar with your sound card and your audio peripherals just leave it as default for right now if you know exactly what your inputs and outputs are on your on your sound card and then you can start tweaking away on here there's also a uh, a section down here for your VSTs. Uh, these are your little DLL programs which you may have collected over the years. Um, various EQs, uh, um, synthesizers, that sort of thing. Um, you can assign the folder on this in this plugin directory selection button here. You can you can have it scan rescan the folder if you put new ones in. Um, you can assign the folder, uh, all that stuff is right here. There is an advanced feature, which I will press this button at the bottom here and to, to advance. Now if you encounter this uh, later on and you want to go back to the quick setup, there is a little check mark down at the bottom left hand corner, which brings you back to the quick setup again. Uh, for right now we'll go into advanced so you can kind of see what's happening in here. Um, all your typical, if you, if you want to switch to ASIO or your computer's MME settings for the driver, it's all here. You can, uh, if your audio card is capable of 24-bit uh, recording, you know, it has the buttons there to allow it to do so. Although you get that, you get that choice uh, later on anyways in, in your recording. Um, what else here? Uh, monitor settings, uh, that sort of thing. Uh, you have a selection of audio devices on your second um, node down here. 
giving you all your recording devices that have been found on your computer and all your playback devices that have been found on your computer. Uh, in my case, I have a pink front panel output and a primary, I mean, I should say an input, uh, a in, uh, primary input for my high uh, definition audio on my Realtac. I have a virtual uh, audio device on here too, which is kind of like a voice synthesizer uh, device. There is also a live chat, which is what I'm speaking through right now, my, my headset. And I have a um, Mustang amplifier um, lined in as well. Uh, what you don't see on here is the MIDI. I have a Uno, which I will switch over here to MIDI. So you can see that I have a USB Uno Mini in. And the MIDI out is the same thing. I have the Uno Mini out with also my GS uh, wavetable, which is the internal MIDI um, in my sound card back to audio devices here um, you can also see that you have selection of playback now we won't we won't select we'll ha we'll have the default selected here so you can see how you can change it in your tracks um, I will say just okay to this and we will take a look at the interface here you can see that you have a shuttle which runs along the track which you can also um, select areas which displays at the bottom here now all, all these all these displays can be modified totally you can have the display over to the left or to the right you can move you can move stuff around uh, quite handily this is an easy mode so you, you don't exactly get that selection for right now um, you when you go into advanced mode you can you can select you have a typical um, forward backward recording uh, interface up on the top here and of course you see we have uh, multiple uh, recording it'll show you a new interface editing show you that interface mixing will show you a a real simple mixing uh, console uh, mastering it will give you a real simple mastering console and export will be also a simple version of the export console Let's go back into recording. You can see that it gives you a really simple interface and the metronome is in here as well. Uh, accompaniment, if you assign an accompaniment of a type of style behind it, uh, it it's got, it, it, it auto accompaniments and, and, it, and it can create its own music as well. Although it's pretty simple, you, uh, but if you're really stuck for ideas, you can, you can get into that as well. So let's go back into the editing and let's take a look at the tracks here. Um, the first track tells you what devices it's uh, it's assigned to. This is a audio device. You can change it by right clicking on the red dot, the uh, record indicator. You can change it to MIDI, which creates an entirely different um, color of of dot on there. Let's go back to audio record. Now you can see that there's only one item here that is checkmarked, which is the Realtek HDA primary input. Now this is where you hit the Y button again to bring up that menu that I was in before. And you can go ahead and assign what your input devices are and let's click OK. Now when you right click, you will see that you have all these alternate assignments here. Now instead of, I could, I could use my voice chat now, and now you can see that the indicator bounces up and down, indicating that my um, recording level is between the zero and the six. Now, if you're new to recording, you should keep your levels uh, down below zero, between the six and the zero. Uh, in fact, closer to the six than the zero. If you end up with uh, it peaking uh, too much, then uh, what will happen is it'll show a red line just like that. Sorry for those listening. Uh, there is a red line on the top of the indicator saying that it had peaked over and it is causing distortion. 
Well, some distortion is good, some is bad. Uh, usually if you're trying to get a clean signal as possible, keep it between the 0 and the 6. Um, definitely more towards the 6 on your track editing fader. All right. Um, so we'll stop it right here for now, and then we'll get into recording on the next session. All right. So thanks for uh, tuning in, and we'll we'll uh, start looking at more features on the advanced interface, and and uh, show you some recording on the audio and the MIDI.